Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is revealing some interesting twists and new trailer footage. Nothing too spoilery, but imagery we need to investigate to figure out why French critics are calling it the best Marvel movie since Endgame. I did not care for the toi, Peter Parker's, or the way Ramonda talked to our UN ambassador. So vive la Groot! <coughs> I am gonna break down the fascinating new details, and if anything seems too spoilery, I will save it for the end and give you a warning. Also, I highly suggest you rewatch Volume 1 and Volume 2 with me in a Guardians of the Galaxy rewatch I am doing on the Deep Dive channel. Volume 2 analysis coming this Friday, and next week when Volume 3 releases on May 5th, I will do a live breakdown and Q&A with all of you. Okay, let's start with this promo released on April 22nd with a roundup of early reviews from the European premiere. Crank up the volume. The Guardians is laugh out loud funny. Exactly, you idiots! Okay, okay, I know sometimes these final days promos get a little cringy with their sound bites from critics and the editing that makes it sound like the characters are interacting with the quotes, but these promos aren't really for us. We already got our tickets. These are really for viewers and events who need a more direct marketing appeal. That's why this promo is cut to Blue Sweets hooked on a feeling from the promos for the 2014 film, the first ever movie soundtrack with no original songs to hit Billboard number one. They're trying to remind everyone how awesome these Guardians movies are. So here we see Peter and Gamora in an inner core of that fleshy facility that we've seen in other trailer footage with hoses of yellow fluid snaking in and out of a tank behind them. I have been speculating that this could be the same yellow celestial brain fluid that the Collector was mining on Nowhere, the special sauce that the high evolutionary Herbert Wyndham might have used to give his creations, like Rocket, human consciousness. There's also this new shot of Groot's fight with Adam Warlock in Nowhere. Groot cocoons his branches around Adam, but Adam, who has experience bursting out of cocoons himself, blasts upward. We also hear the voice of Rocket's past love the otter-like creation of Lila. It's good to have friends. To me, that sounds like the voice of Linda Cardellini, who already plays Laura Barton in the MCU, but she worked with James Gunn in his Scooby-Doo films and the film Super. Gunn actually confirmed Cardellini is voicing Lila this morning in an exclusive new clip via Collider, with Michaela Hoover playing Floor and Asim Chaudhry playing Teefs. Lila. Lila. That's a pretty name, Lila. Thank you. I think my name shall be Teefs. Because although we all do have them, mine are definitely the most prominent. <laughs> <laughs> Teefs. Teefs. Lila. Teefs. <laughs> <laughs> Me be called Floor because me is lying on floor. You're lying on a floor? So your name is Floor? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> floor. <laughs> What about you, friend? Someday, I'm gonna make great machines that fly. And me and my friends are gonna go flying together into the forever and beautiful sky. Lila and Teefs and Floor and me. Rocket. We're still wondering which, if any, of the Guardians might die in this film, but after past trailer shots of Peter Quill screaming over a medical table, a setting where another shot of Groot included a screen with Rocket's outline, we now see Rocket sitting up on that medical table, very much alive. So, that happened. Now, that isn't to say Rocket won't die in this movie or that there might be something else going on here, but this is just a good example of how trailers are often edited deceptively and you can't always draw firm conclusions from them. I go more into the specifics of how this works in my deep dive on trailer deception. And the best way to support me doing that kind of new investigatory content and to celebrate 89P13 is to grab one of these rocket science shirts at nerdriot.shop in the deep dive collection. Now, returning to this footage from the volume 2 post credit scene, Kruger returns using sorcery to conjure a laugh emoji. Now, Kruger is a lem species. In the comics, he is Sorcerer Supreme in an alternate 31st century reality, Earth 691. Here, he wears a vest with the Ravager logo in a green stone in the middle, which might be his version of the Eye of Agamotto. Also in this scene, Michael Rosenbaum returns as Martinet. Stakar Ogord's lieutenant, and the floating robot head of Mainframe, who is voiced by Miley Cyrus in the volume 2 post credit scene. I miss you guys so much! And she'll presumably voice a character here. By the way, the maroon shirt that Peter wears has a blue or loney on it. Those are the scurrying rat creatures of the Guardians movies. So to do these breakdowns, I'm on my Mac constantly for work. And the last thing I need is a spinning beach ball of death slowing me down. That's why I use Clean My Mac X. For me, Clean My Mac X is a must-have tool whether my Mac is brand new or 10 years old. The app is made with every Mac in mind. Clean My Mac X has a ton of useful features, but the most prominent is Smart Scan, which makes sure no junk files are keeping my Mac from running as fast as possible. 
possible. Clean My Mac X also comes with an uninstaller to get rid of all the stuff apps can leave behind when you delete the main file. I can also use Space Lens to quickly and easily see which files are taking up the most space on my system. The newest version of Clean My Mac X also lets me easily keep tabs on what's going on with my RAM, CPU, external disks, and connected devices using the redesign menu app. And whenever I'm not sure which of Clean My Mac X's Swiss Army Knife set of tools would be best to use next, I just use the built-in assistant to figure out what I need to do to optimize my Mac's performance. Clean My Mac X is the best way to get the most out of your computer. To get started, click the link in the description and get a free seven day trial of Clean My Mac X today. And trust me, after using Clean My Mac for free for seven days, you're gonna love it as much as I do. Click the link in the description below to start your free seven day trial today. Now, there were also a few longer clips released. Let's take a look at this scene with Quill, Nebula, Mantis, Drax, and Groot on counter Earth. Drax, stay here with Rocket. Watch him, that's who they're coming for. Oh, Groot, you know what to do with these. Push it down. I am pushing down on it. Push the button. <laughs> it looks like you're pushing the keyhole. The what? There's a button under the handle. Press that in. <sighs> okay. Now what? Open the door. Whoa, so this is officially the first F-bomb of the MCU. James Gunn confirmed it will be uncensored in the theatrical cut. Going on to say how you can only have one f in a PG-13 movie, and then he told Chris Pratt to add it on set, and it made the moment funnier, so they kept it. But this is a big deal. The MCU has never had F-bombs, only kind of these self-censored moments, like Peter Parker in Spider-Man No Way Home. What the f Or Nick Fury in the post-credit scene of Avengers Infinity War. Well done. Now, Groot's bedroom in the volume two post credit scene had f you written on it in the scroll language. And James Gunn has said that many of his I am Groot's throughout the movies have just been versions of f Adjacent to the MCU, we did get that one famous one from Wolverine in X-Men First Class. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier, go f yourself. Now, we gotta say the VFX of Groot in this scene look insanely good. It looks like a guy wearing a Groot suit. And it sounds like from their conversation that Rocket is here in this residential house, but it makes me curious why we have not seen Rocket in any of the footage in this scene, other than shots where Gamora is carrying him to safety, fleeing from Adam Warlock, who's gonna attack them in this location. Now, another clip released to Rotten Tomatoes includes Peter recapping the events of Infinity War and Endgame to Daniela Melchior's character, Yoda. Not really sure the spelling there, but here's what happens. We used to be in love. Yeah, she was my girlfriend, only she doesn't remember it because it wasn't her. Because her dad threw her off a magic cliff and she died, and then I lost my temper and nearly destroyed half the universe. And she came back out of the past. There she is. Everyone else who died in the past stayed dead, not her. Why? Was it the magic cliff? I don't know. That's some freaking Infinity Stone scientist. And some dumbass Earth dude who met a girl, fell in love. That girl died and then came back a total dick. Ha, it's interesting that Peter Quill takes responsibility for losing his temper and punching Thanos out of Mantis's trance in that dog pile during the Battle of Titan in Avengers Infinity War, because they nearly did end that war in that single moment. And had Peter Quill not punched Thanos, half of all life would not have been dusted. Also, little detail here, I love how Peter tosses this orb and catches it, just like he did with the orb in volume one that contained the Power Stone when he was trying to look cool, but he dropped it. So while Peter is remembering the Infinity Stones in this moment, he instinctively does the move he did with the one Infinity Stone he held. Okay, another extended clip shows the Guardians in those spacesuits that totally look like the Among Us suits, but they are actually not, so the suits in 2001 A Space Odyssey, Peter tries to profess his love to Gamora. Well, what I'm trying to say is... Peter, you know this is an open line, right? What? We're listening to everything you're saying. And it is painful. And you're just telling me now? We were hoping it would stop on its own. But I switched it over to private. What color button did you push? Blue, for the blue suit. Oh, no. Blue was the open line for everyone. Orange is for blue. What? Black is for orange. Yellow is for green. Green is for red. And red is for yellow. No, yellow is for yellow. Green is for red. Red is for green. I don't think so. Try it then. Hello! <laughs> you were right. Ha, ah, just some classic who's on first style absurdism here. Based on this insane color logic, Peter is the only one of them whose color, yellow, matches his button. So he's the only one that they could easily yell at and get the right person. But for Peter to talk privately to Gamora, he would have to punch orange, which is Mantis's color, the color of his half sister. Also little detail, I like how Drax wears the red suit, but it is accessed with the green button. Drax in the comics was originally the color green. Now there's another new shot of Nebula in all these promos showing her new metallic weave arm turning into a cannon. Gun confirmed that this this nanotech was built for Nebula by Rocket to repay her for her gifting him Bucky's vibranium arm in the Guardians Holiday Special. Then on to the last promo we will talk about here, which was released on IGN. Take a look. That is sad. Do you know what's sad? People on Earth die when they're like 50. Are you about to die? I'm not 50. 
Knock it off! What? You got issues, Quill. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, so Peter's assessment of average life expectancy is lower because his mother died when she was young. She was probably in her 30s when that happened. But also remember, Peter Quill as an adult has not been on Earth for very long, and one Terran human that he saw die was Tony Stark when Tony Stark was in his 50s. Now, I would say life expectancy was lower in the 80s, but no, it was 75 in 1988 when he was abducted. And I hate to bump people out, but we're now at a point in 2023 where life expectancy has gone down, which with things like the blip and all the madness that happened afterwards with all these Avengers level threats, life expectancy on the MCU Earth is probably even lower. But my favorite part of this, it's hard to see since Drax is invisible, but as Drax slowly snacks in the background, when Mantis asks if Peter's about to die, thinking that he's around 50 years old, Drax nods. Now the last detail I'm gonna talk about is a bit spoilery, so feel free to stop watching now. Thanks everybody. But if you stuck around, you may have caught a quick shot of the high evolutionary Herbert Wyndham ship on a collision course with Nowhere. So it looks as though the reason the Guardians were set up with Nowhere as their new home in the Guardians Holiday Special was to set up this climactic final battle in this familiar setting for furthering my thinking that Celestials and their goo are really at the heart of this story. Okay, so a reminder, Friday, April 28th, will be my deep dive of Guardians Volume 2, followed by Friday, May 5th, noon Eastern, my live breakdown and Q&A, a spoiler conversation of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. My Easter egg breakdown of Volume 3 will come out later that day on the main New Rockstars channel right here. And again, please help me continue to grow the deep dive channel by grabbing one of these rocket science tees at nerdriot.shop, which has a ton of other great Guardians of the Galaxy inspired designs. Subscribe to New Rockstars on YouTube and on all social platforms. Follow me at EA Voss. Thanks for watching. Bye.